Welcome. Welcome. It's Monday. It's Monday. But it's also my birthday week. <laughs> yeah. My birthday's on Wednesday. My name's Alexandria, and this is Michael, whose birthday week it is. And today we're making carrot cake. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Finger guns. <laughs> Welcome to The Full Measure. If you haven't seen our show before, we like to make a dish in two ways. The first way we make it is the very easy, simple way. We try to make it a little bit better and we call that the half measure. The second way we make it, we usually go all out and we try to make it a little bit more complicated, a little bit more involved, and we call that the full measure. At the end of the episode, we let you know whether going the full measure was worth it or not. The first thing I wanna say, somebody asked a couple weeks ago what the book is. Oh, so yeah. do you wanna show them what that book is? It's actually just a planner that Michael got me this year, or for Christmas, I guess. I'll pencil you in. It's from Easy Tiger. Good, good little book. <laughs> So our show is not normally a vlog, but we got some news this week that definitely changed some stuff on the show. Uh, so we discovered that I have celiac. For people that don't know what celiac is, can you tell them what it is? I basically just have to omit all gluten from my diet. At home, not that big of a deal, but on the show, it's gonna kind of change a few things. The show is not necessarily going to be a gluten-free cooking show, but eating gluten-free is now part of our life, and we wanna show people how to make that possible, even while going the full or half measures. Another really great element to the way that we're doing our show and then changing some of the gluten-free stuff is I'll be able to give my perspective as someone who will eat gluten-free foods who can also eat the non-gluten-free counterparts and hopefully we just are adding more information to the show that everyone finds helpful and useful. I'm also just very aware that when we make the show, Alexander's opinion is equal and valid and I want to be able to hear it still. And if we need to make a version that's gluten-free, then that's definitely worth it for me. It's just an opportunity to make the show grow into an area that we weren't necessarily covering and being more inclusive because we just found out yesterday this specific episode isn't quite adjusted yet to what our new format will be today we are making carrot cake which I'm very excited about because carrot cake is my favorite cake and we are making it because this week is my birthday week and I wanted to have a carrot cake the half measure version we're making is just straight out of the box probably a carrot cake that a lot of people had before that is not necessarily gluten free so we'll make some adjustments there and then the full measure carrot cake is completely from scratch it's a recipe from Bon Appetit's best list. We are going to convert that to a gluten-free carrot cake. I'm excited to try that. I'm, I'm just excited to eat carrot cake in general because it is my favorite cake of all time. Um, it's a good cake. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's get started on the half measure. That's it? Just a little nod? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our half measure carrot cake comes from a box. Box cake mix is wonderful, period. We only need a few ingredients to make it, plus some frosting in a can. That frosting is less wonderful than cake mix, but we will get to that later. As I was filming, I improvised a few things to make this cake better. They're listed out here. Box cake mix is as simple as it gets. Put everything in a bowl and mix. I like to whisk all of my wet ingredients together first. Three large eggs, two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil, and one cup of water. The water, I forgot. Add your dry cake mix and whisk together for about two minutes. You can see here that I added my water late because I knew something was off. The batter was like clay. Gross. To add some measure to this half measure, I added a pinch of kosher salt, about one teaspoon of both ground ginger and ground cinnamon, one whole carrot, all you have to do is peel it and then use a box grater to make quick work of the carrot, and some chopped walnuts. There are some microscopic pieces of what I assume are freeze-dried carrot in the mix, but why not make it even more carroty? Fold these additions in to combine, grease a 13 by 9 cake pan or two 9 inch rounds, and pour your batter in. For a glass dish, you'll preheat to 325 degrees, and for metal pans, 350. Bake these for about 32 minutes or until a cake tester, in this case a knife, pulls out of the center with no uncooked batter clinging to the metal. Then cool the cake completely. It has to be completely cool before adding frosting. Frosting in a can works just fine, but I want to share some wisdom that I learned from Alton Brown years ago. I'm paraphrasing, but the basic lesson is, if you're going to make a cake at home and you want to make part of it from scratch, make the icing. Most people do the cake part because it seems more bakerly, but commercial cake mix has all kinds of chemistry in it that will give you a much better cake than you can ever make for yourself. And canned frosting is not that great. Homemade frosting is so much better. That's where you should spend your time and your effort. If you are using canned frosting, spread an even layer over the entire cake. I'm leaving my cake in the dish because that's how most carrot cakes I've ever had come. And I'm not about to pretend like I'm fancy, especially on a half measure. I use the whole can of frosting for this size of cake. Lastly, I like to top with some more of the chopped walnuts. It's nice to let people know what's inside the cake so they know exactly what they're signing up for. Some little carrot-shaped candies are 
another crowd favorite. That's it. Half measure carrot cake in the bag. Unfortunately, Alexandria will not be able to try the cake, but the frosting is gluten-free, and so I saved some for her to compare this frosting to the full measure frosting. Overall, boxed cake mix is great. I think it makes a really lovely cake, and I've eaten more cake from a box than I've had fancy slices in my lifetime. If you're going to make it, why not add some of your own items to it? Let's see if my carrot and walnut gamble paid off. Box. What's up, box carrot cake? cake? Box carrot cake is great. The icing is whatever. This is our first taste test with Alexandria knowing that she has celiac. So the only thing, and it, it's mostly because we weren't prepared for this episode. <laughs> uh, this will be hopefully different in the future, but yeah. the frosting is gluten-free, so she can try that. And we can talk about the difference between frosting out of a can and frosting that you make at home. I will eat that frosting. do a deep dive on this frosting. <laughs> I added carrots and walnuts and ginger and cinnamon too. So I basically used the cake mix and made it like I would have made the cake at home yeah. by myself anyway. Okay. So yeah, let's give it a try. Really gets you in the in Yeah, the it's here. like, <laughs> the frosting is like sweet and like that's it. And it's like, it's tooth achingly sweet. This is the only way I yeah. know how to describe it. I can taste the cinnamon and the ginger and the walnuts that I added like kind of individually, but it doesn't like kind of marry together. The texture is nice and moist. The best thing about box cake is the texture always. It's just like the most moist, fluffy cake. Overall, I would say like, it's pretty solid. I mean, Bo it, box cakes are a, a really good option, I feel. Yeah, and it was super easy. It took longer to cool it than it did <laughs> to make the entire cake. So then to ice it and everything. Um, and then I think there's just something really special about having this like 13 by nine, like cake out of like a home pan. Yeah, like, that feels it's like, just, like really nostalgic. And yeah. Nice. I think of the half measures in my head are more like pass fail. Mm -hmm. It's either worth it or it's not. And this is worth it. The carrots and the walnuts though, I think really add a lot to the cake. The texturally like, and I put some walnuts yeah, for you too. I'll say like, I wasn't expecting that, but that's a nice texture thing. Having that little bit of crunch is nice. Yeah, cake is pretty mono textural. I don't know if that's a word, but you were just eating ice cream at this point. <laughs> I think it's time to make carrot cake for me for my birthday. Okay. The full measure carrot cake comes from BA's best list. The ingredients are numerous, but they are all very common items, and I bet you have most of them on hand right now. The only thing we are changing today is to swap the all-purpose flour for gluten-free all-purpose flour. Your cake can just use regular old AP flour. Speaking of, because of the short notice, we had to scramble and find gluten-free flour quickly. Luckily, the Whole Foods near us had Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flour, which comes highly recommended from what we've read. It's a blend of several different types of non-glutinous flours, plus some xanthan gum. We will be trying out a few different kinds of flours in the weeks to come, and we'll let you know what we think of each. I think in the future, I would have just made a typical cake and then a small gluten-free cake for Alexandria, but I wanted to dive in head first for this one. Again, this isn't going to become a gluten-free focused show, but we are gonna try some stuff out. Your cake will turn out just as great by only swapping the flour. Let's get to it. The first thing we'll do is preheat the oven to 350 degrees and chop about one cup of walnuts for roasting. Place this on a baking sheet lined with parchment and roast them in a preheated oven for eight to 10 minutes. The only other prep we have is one pound of carrots. Peel them and use a box grater to grate them up. Put these in a bowl and cover with one cup of room temperature buttermilk and stir to combine. In a medium bowl, add two and a half cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of ground ginger, and two teaspoons of cinnamon. Whisk these together to evenly combine. In the bowl of a stand mixer, or by hand if it's RM day, add four large eggs, one cup of granulated sugar, and three quarters of a cup of dark brown sugar. Whisk these together at a high speed for four minutes. It'll become light in color and in consistency. Switch the mixer to the paddle attachment and very slowly drizzle in three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil. We need this to go in slowly to create an emulsion. Next, we add the dry mixture and the carrots in alternating batches, one third of the dry, and then mix until completely combined. One half of the carrots, mix to combine, a third of the dry, then mix, last half of the carrots, mix, last third of the dry mix, and you're finished. At this point, you're done with the mixer and you can remove the bowl and, ugh. Luckily, I caught it and didn't lose much batter. Let's see that a few more times. I played baseball for most of my life. I was a catcher, actually, so I've got some quick hands. That really helped me here. Let's see that in slow motion, even. I think my coaches would be proud of how quickly those hands are still moving. After I cleaned up the mess, we add the roasted walnuts to the batter and fold them in. We are making a layer cake today, so we need two 9-inch cake pans with parchment lining the bottom. It helps if you trace the outside of the pan and cut a little smaller diameter with scissors. Alexandria is much better with arts and crafts. I asked her to help me make a proper circle for the second one. Spray both pans with nonstick spray, then put your liners in and spray again to coat the liners. 
Pour half of the batter into each pan, or as close as you can get. Then these go into the preheated 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until a cake tester comes out clean. Let these cool for 10 minutes before taking them out of the pan. It helps to run a knife around the edge first. You can use a plate or the cooling rack on top of the pan and flip. You can see how much the parchment helped the cake from getting stuck to the bottom of the pan. These do have to cool completely before we move on to the icing. It took about an hour for both of these to cool down. I'm warning you now, if you've never seen frosting made, prepare for some shame. Because we start with one and a half sticks of butter, one and a half packages of cream cheese, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whip these together in a stand mixer fitted with a whisk for one minute on high. Next, four whole cups of powdered sugar. Add these in batches to prevent a giant powdered sugar explosion. Four cups is what the recipe calls for, so that's what I'm adding. If I'm being honest, I think you could get away with two here. Once you get it all in there, return to a high speed and whip for two minutes or until fluffy. To assemble the cake, grab your favorite cake platter. I like to add another parchment circle to keep things as clean as possible, which is to say, not that clean once you add icing. Place one of the layers with the flat side pointed up. This helps the cake stay more sturdy. Spread about three quarters of a cup of the frosting over the top of this layer with an offset or a silicone spatula. Cover this layer with the other layer. Again, flat side pointing up. This gives the cake a nice flat top and it helps everything look more clean. Cover the top and the sides with a thin layer of frosting about one cup or maybe a little more. We just want to cover everything. No decorating just yet. Place this thinly frosted cake into the fridge for 30 minutes to help the frosting set. A few moments later. After 30 minutes, add the rest of the frosting. I have to take a second and apologize to any of the viewers who are accomplished cake decorators. I'm utter and complete rubbish at this part. I'm so sorry you have to watch this. Get it to whatever final state you want, or in my case, whatever you are actually capable of. And then how about some pocket carrots to finish? These are just little carrot shavings that I made with my vegetable peeler. They're a nice garnish, and again, they let people know what's inside. Give them a little twist, and we're done. This platter has a dome as well, but I'll be honest, it's just overkill. It does look fancy though. Our carrot cake is complete. This is my first time making a gluten-free baked good, ever. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It looks moist and it has good height, two common critiques of gluten-free baked goods. Honestly, I'm just happy to be having carrot cake, and I'm happy that Alexandria gets to eat this with me. What's the point of eating a birthday cake alone? That's just sad. Cake is meant to be shared. Speaking of which, let's give this sans gluten carrot cake a try. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Oh, oh. wow. Really, it's a gorgeous cake. Yeah. Let's have a bite. You, you go for it. You go first, because it's your birthday. Okay, we'll go at the same time. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. Oh! You taste what the frosting? Yeah. Like the frosting is like so much better. It doesn't hit you and it doesn't. It doesn't make your teeth hurt. It doesn't like hit you up here. It's more of like down here. I don't know how to describe sweets other than this. So that's really nice. It is really nice. Uh, the frosting, which is gluten free by virtue of the fact that the ingredients just don't have any gluten in it, leaps and bounds better. I would say almost immediately, if you're gonna make a cake at home, make the frosting at home. That's really good. Compare just specifically the can frosting versus that. Yeah. Like, is it like no competition? Right. Me? I'll say as someone who really loves cake, if I didn't know this was a gluten-free cake, like there's no way of me really identifying that, I feel like, with my first bite. It's a little bit more dense than typical cake. It's a little a little bit drier than typical cake, but that is not to say that that cake is dense and dry. At, at all. It's a really good it's cake. It's not a dry cake. No, yeah, I wanna take another bite. Okay, let's do that. I think it's really telling that we set out to make a gluten-free dessert. The first comment that I have is not even about the cake, it's about the icing. <laughs> like the icing is that good. I think that that means two things. The icing is that good. The cake is good enough to be cake, like it's cake, just eat it. Well, I really like it. It tastes like carrot cake. I mean- Yeah, it, but like elevated carrot cake. Yeah, I mean, this is a really nice carrot cake. It, the fact that it's gluten-free is- It's not like the real sweet carrot cake I feel like you normally have. The sweetness, some of it comes from the cake. There's still a lot of sugar in that. That's still a cake. But it's it is like a spiced cake. It has yeah. the ginger and the cinnamon and the carrot. My favorite desserts are like pumpkin pie and oh, carrot yeah. cake. I like cheesecake. That's oh, pretty yeah. sweet. But like I tend to lean away from the overly sweet desserts. And I think I have normally been kind of the opposite where like I would definitely eat that icing from the 
<laughs> from the can, no yeah. problem. But I think as like I get older, kind of like that really intense sugary flavor that I used to crave is dying down a little bit. It's all about balance. This is a really well-balanced cake. I don't know that Bon Appetit necessarily intended on this being gluten-free. We made it gluten-free. This is literally the first in a long journey of us making uh, desserts and not just desserts, but food that we find and finding ways to make it gluten-free. And yeah. I think we're off to a great start because that's pretty damn successful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And all we did was all I did was swap a flour. Yeah. Let's see where these cakes ranked on the chart of worthiness. This is the chart of worthiness that measures how much effort goes into a dish versus how much payoff you get. The half measure carrot cake out of the box obviously is very simple, and the payoff was pretty decent. This is a really solid half measure. The full measure carrot cake was undoubtedly better, and it honestly was not that much work. This is a situation where I would typically make cake from scratch regardless. But if you're gonna do the half measure, I highly recommend making the frosting from scratch rather than using the stuff out of the can. This is a surefire way to make your cake better without that much more work. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you can check out some of our other videos as well. If you wanna make any of the food that you see on our show, we put all the recipes up on fullmeasureshow.com. I actually also so just as of this week, added all the equipment that I cook with to the website. So you can check that out too. Not that anyone necessarily needs to buy all the stuff that I have, but I've had a couple people ask what several of my tools are in the kitchen. So I put that up there. If you decide to make anything from the show, or if you decide to make this carrot cake, please, please tag us. Yeah, tag us on Instagram, because we really love to see what you guys are making. We like to share it with everyone, or the, on that platform. Mm -hmm. On any, We're on Twitter and Facebook as well. We have a Patreon that you could go to. You can find that on the website and all of our social media links as well. Down below, leave us a comment if you have anything that you'd like to see us cook, any suggestions that you'd like to see us try. Let us know what your favorite dessert is. What's your favorite cake? Um, yeah. Mine's clearly carrot cake. What's your favorite cake? I love wedding cakes. Oh yeah, wedding cake. I didn't know that that was a thing until like a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, the wedding cake is a specific type of cake. Leave us a comment down below if you have a gluten-free kitchen or you are someone who eats gluten-free. We are just now getting started on learning Learning everything. You probably saw a lot of stuff in the episode that I did that maybe wasn't particularly aware of like cross-contamination and stuff like that. We are, we Be are gentle. We are trying to learn. Um, we're, we're doing our best. This is literally day one of living gluten-free life. We've got a lot of work to do. We also will probably be taking a break for just a couple of weeks. We have posted at least once a week since we started back in April. We'll miss talking to all of you and, and interacting with you through all of our social media stuff. We need to spend a couple of weeks making sure that we get our kitchen <laughs> turned into a safe spot for our new gluten-free uh, adventures. But then we'll be back. Then we will be back. Probably is running a little long because we've given you a lot of updates, but thank you so much for watching these videos thank and you. we will see you on the next one.